All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about distributeless ignition systems, wasted spark, rotary engines, things like that. With distributeless ignition systems, they went to what they call wasted spark design, where your opposing cylinders fire simultaneously. So like in a small block Chevy, 18436572, cylinders one and six will fire their spark plugs at the same time. Now, what I didn't understand until earlier today I've never worked on distributed ignition systems. Um, most of the stuff I worked on is older. Um, you have a coil that has two poles on it, and the two spark plugs that fire, that, like for instance the one in six, when they fire, one of those is positive polarity and the other one is negative polarity. So they're firing at the same time, but the current actually goes out through one spark plug, goes through the cylinder head, and block, whatever, comes back up the other spark plug to the, the coil. So that's where your complete circuit is made. And uh, you know there's a discussion as to whether that's what made it wasted spark or not. So on the on the distributed ignition systems they have double platinum plugs because one, you know, on one plug your current is coming in through the, the, the post here, coming up through the center electrode to the grounding strap to the cylinder head. And the other one it's coming the, the, the current is coming to the grounding strap to your center electrode and back through this to the coil. So, you know, one, you know, you're, you're having a transfer of electrons here. It's actually taking away some of the physical property of the, the, the metals. So one of them is going to, going to erode here on the center electrode and the other one is going to uh, erode on the ground strap. And platinum plugs are more resilient and deteriorate less quickly. So a double platinum plug is required for a distributed ignition system and your wasted spark, so on and so forth. Now, the, the, the question was, does wasted spark refer to the fact that, you know, it, it's a distributeless ignition system, or does it refer to the fact that the other cylinder is firing on the exhaust stroke? Now, back when I was playing with RX-7s a lot, um, we did wasted spark on these. Uh, somebody figured out you could take a second JRX-7 coil that has two poles, and you can run it, with just bypass the distributor completely and have both rotors fire at the same time all the time on the leading ignition. Yeah, leading is over here, your trailing is up here. The leading ignition you could fire at the same time all the time, it wouldn't cause any problems. The trailing ignition you couldn't do that on. You still had to use a distributor for your trailing ignition, which was about 10% of your power, so you didn't want to eliminate the, the trailing ignition altogether. But I was going to explain here how that worked because there's some question. And again, this is a, a question that came up on the GM truck form, and you know I was just commenting on my experience, and somebody you know said, "How can you have wasted spark on a rotary engine?" Well, your spark plug sits right here, so I'll just thread that in a little bit. I think that's actually a standard thread, not a metric thread. Metric thread, so I'm not going to go in too far with it, but that'll give you a reference point for where this comes around. So when your engine's running. You come around to top dead center, and typically on the rotary engines, we wanted the leading plug to fire at 16 degrees before top dead center. If I remember right, it's been several years, well, it's been over 10 years since I played with the rotary engines. And you wanted your trailing to fire within four degrees after. You know, within four degrees, you know, that's, that's pretty close to, to. You have to remember on a rotary engine, your intake is up here, and your exhaust is at the peripheral port down here. So your intake comes in. Your air fuel mixture is here, it gets compressed, your spark plug fires, your trailing spark plug fires immediately after, and that pushes this wider. Now, if you remember at top dead center, your spark plug fired. If you have a wasted spark, it's going to fire again right about there. Your exhaust port is just starting to open up, and there goes your exhaust. Here's your port right here, as it comes around and squeezes your exhaust out. So, on the, the rotaries, we would run a dual plug coil to the leading ignition system, and it would fire, after this had all been burned, it was, was starting to, to come out the exhaust, right about there, it is exhaust open, exposed to the spark plug and then when it came around again it would fire 
So, and you have to remember on a rotary engine, a crankshaft, your, your crankshaft is known as the eccentric shaft, but it spins at a, there's a three to one reduction. So when the eccentric shaft is spinning at 9,000 RPM, this rotor here is spinning at 3,000 RPM. So um, your, your timing is a little, you, your timing on the crankshaft actually has one third the effect of what it has here. So 12 degrees is, you know, let's see, 12 degrees here. Oh, the math on this is tough. I get so confused. Um, if your crankshaft turns 12 degrees, your eccentric, or if your eccentric shaft turns 12 degrees, your rotor's actually only turning four degrees. So keep that in mind. But anyways, that's just kind of a simple explanation of how Wasted Spark wrote, worked on rotary engines. And with a second generation RX-7 coil and a MSD-6A uh, ignition box, I, I was able to get significantly more fuel economy. The you know people complain about how rotaries don't have any torque. I had all the torque I cared for. Uh, the, my RPM range. I ran this engine all the way up to 9,000. Well, not this engine, but the engine that I have still assembled in the shed. It's going in my Sunbeam Alpine. Hopefully someday would run all the way to 9,000 RPM with that MSD 6A and wasted spark and uh, significantly more smoothness. It was all around better. Uh, better situation. So, thank you. Have a good day.